Welcome to MTB Cooking. Today we will share with you how to cook a summer squash lasagna without pasta. And it's not to be a saint or anything, but we're actually just trying to, to shift up the good old lasagna here. First of all, we'll make this intense tomato and beef sauce for the lasagna. So we start by um, browning off some minced beef and we do that on high heat so that we get a nice golden color on the meat and uh, extract all the water from it. Then we have added some um, diced bacon that'll give this nice smoked and salty taste. We've added a chopped onion as well as some chopped chilies, celery and a red bell pepper. So this will all give beautiful texture to the sauce and of course we do want to extract the maximum of water from the vegetables so we'll let this all simmer for quite a while in the pan. We've also added a shredded carrot. It's gonna give a nice body to this sauce. We will add minced garlic and we'll do that directly onto the pan so it can release some of its flavors. And then after that we'll just add in cans of tomatoes that are chopped uh, and also have uh, some sauce with them in the cans. This will really make the sauce for this uh, lasagna. And we will also add in just uh, boiling water and uh, a bouillon cube, which will give a good taste and also more of this saucy, um, liquidy texture to the sauce. Let this whole sauce simmer away on the stove. And uh, next to that, you can start by slicing up your courgettes or your squash. Uh, You'll do that easily on a mandoline, but if you don't have one, you can use a kitchen knife. Just be careful not to cut yourself. We need these courgette slices to be relatively thin to, uh, to put them into the lasagna as lasagna noodles. So um, we would recommend a thickness of around half a centimeter. We will spread out some kitchen towel onto our kitchen table. And what we'll do is we will place all of the slices of squash that we just cut, um, because now we want to extract most of the water from the, the slices. We know that there's a lot of water in these and that it would actually contribute to a very liquid lasagna if not done. We can sprinkle on just normal table salt onto each piece of squash and this will, uh, will help us extract the water. So we'll leave them to rest for 10 to 15 minutes. Even longer would be better. On the stove, we see that our sauce is uh, having a good time. It's getting more and more intense and we'll just add a bit of sugar and balsamic vinegar to intensify the flavors uh, of the sauce even more. As you can see, we are now filming the courgette after around 15 minutes. So you can see the water is actually starting to appear on the surface of the slices. We will also grate some Parmesan cheese because we want to add it when layering the lasagna. We've waited 20 minutes for our squashes to throw off as much water as they could. So what we'll do is we will absorb all of the water using a paper towel. And here we, we are just advising you that you should have plenty because it will take up a lot of, uh, a lot of paper to, to dry up all the water that uh, has been extracted from these slices. Of course, it's not all of the water. It's inevitable that there will still be water in, in the slices, but we've at least done part of the, of the job here. It's now time to assemble the lasagna. So we take a nice lasagna pan and what we'll do first is to just disperse a little bit of olive oil onto the bottom of the pan as well as the sides. So we won't have anything sticking there too. We can then add just a thin layer to begin with of our sauce. On top of that, we will add uh, one layer of our squash slices. So we build up the lasagna with the squash slices being the lasagna noodles. On top of those, we'll add another, a bit thicker layer of the sauce. And then a layer of the grated Parmesan cheese, which will melt nicely into each layer and become a, sort of a glue that will also help it all stick well together, but give a great taste as well. On top of the Parmesan cheese, we'll add another layer of the squash and then we continue until we have used up all of our ingredients. A 
And it's important to say that we've made a space on each side of the ingredients. So each side that's facing the pan so that excess water from the vegetables can run out and lay itself in these spaces. It's a really good trick and it'll help you serving up the lasagna and avoiding uh, water all over the, the place because evidently there will be some water left in the vegetables. We have topped off the lasagna with some Gouda cheese and we baked it for 30 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius, that is 390 degrees Fahrenheit. And as you can see, the result is this beautifully golden lasagna on top. It looks completely like the normal one you'd make using pasta. But what's hiding in here is, uh, of course, layers of nice courgette or squash. We'll cut a nice big piece after having let it cool down just for a little bit. And then we'll show you the result. It is an amazing and firm piece of lasagna we have here and we'll dress it up using a bit of fresh basil and some olive oil that'll give it great taste and when we dig into it now and cut it you can actually see how the squash has kept firm there was no mushiness at all um, about this lasagna it was an amazing result a really intense flavor and we can only recommend that you try it out and as you can see there's no water on the plate at all it's all stayed in the pan Thanks a lot for having watched this video with MTB Cooking. We hope that you'll join us again next time, that you'll give this video a like and subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you later. Bye.